And here we go. Back to the dork table with all of you. What are you doing here now? Go. Go, go, go. Anyway, we're on a Saturday, the 10th of November, 2018. And we're here at the dork table live in Denmark. Yep, that little faraway place that nobody wants to go. Anyway, so Grimner carries us on a whole bunch of places. I listen to Mary talk about it all the time, but I never really remember where they are. Sometimes I remember BitChute or Spreaker. Who else? Um, hmm. Well, there you go. BitChute and Spreaker are pretty good. I like them both, so now I've, I don't know which one to open so I can get the rating on the good site problems I have and live in the harsh life I live in here in Denmark. Anyway, let's say hey to the live chat and crowd in the real liberty media dot com chat room. That, that's where I go there to to read the the loving words of my peers and associates on the RLM chat. Hey cakes. I'm gonna start out we got hey, uh, Cirque says hey cakes We've got Barman, Gurimnir, Miss Kate, Chloe, Chalcedoni, Chalcedoni, Circles. The wife's back up, so she's not sick anymore. Uh, Chloe again, D underscore C, Echelon, me, I be Don C, Jew Dread, Pax Fight, Pax Phone, Ponsas, Rain, RLM Fluke, Rob Works. Hey, Rob. Rooms, Skittle, Vinny, The Phantom, Esmo 2, Colfax 101, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, Dork Cakes, Z, Gromit, Java Doctor 2, Jays 9's Jays, Kozu, and mm, I think that's a bot or something. I don't know. Hey, Vincenzo. Anyway, so... We're doing another dork table program here out in the free world of wherever you're at, I suppose. Anyway, what did I write today? I wrote a slogan for the dork table. I said, the dork table is for those who do not need therapy. So that <laughs> that defines this little two-hour stint we do on Saturdays, I suppose. It does for me. You know, thanks, Grim, for helping me change this. And I suppose I don't have to type anything in now that just changed the name back and forth, right? It's automatic. Or do I still have to fill in that little box on my uh, my Rocket Broadcaster? Oh, it's already filled in. It says now live. So do I? I never hit update. Whoops. I just hit update. Well, I'm learning. I think, well, not, maybe not learning. I'm just tripping over my own mic cord once in a while and get the right answer. But I thought that was pretty clever of me, making this a non-therapeutic kind of place to go when you're bored. You know, If you ain't got nothing better to do on a Saturday than kick back and smoke a joint, then you're probably at the best place there is to be in the known world, except Maybe for the Rothschild's house for dinner or something like that. But this is pretty good. And let's see, what are we gonna what are we gonna explain to the world from the the dork side this week? I really didn't think of much. I've been too busy um entertaining my uh artistic side with this crazy damn puzzle thing. And I like puzzles. Word puzzles, physical puzzles. Yeah, Hansel's kind of a puzzle, if you make too much of it. I don't, well, not like him. It's just, what would I do without him? I did? Oh, I think you're on. I think you need to roll faster, sweetheart. Put the knitting down and chop, chop. Wow, you have a you have a radio show host here to entertain. Don't mess it up for the world. I must be in a good mood when I do this, or... Well, it could go badly. Anyway, so Rob was helping me on In a Perfect World um, Tuesday. And I got a chance to ask him some questions about 
energy. And he's got quite a bit of knowledge in that department. And anybody I've talked to, it seems like the few that I have spoken to, they all lead me down the same area. And that number 54 came up, and it baffled him about, well, I wonder why Larry would be so uh, concerned about the number 9. And then he started to think about the resonance and vibrations and all that. That's where that number 9 comes in, the harmonies. Like, we get the music on 420HZ, and it's supposed to be uh, 432, I think. Now, I don't know why. Might have the wrong number to fix me up if I fucked that up, Rob. <clears throat> but it should be, if at 432, it'd be perfect. Oh, Hansel is J. Dread, Mr. Cakes. Mm. That master of mischief. That insulter of every country on the planet, except his own. Yeah, sometimes his own, too. Hans Dietrich. Oh, boy, that was a lot of fun. Anyway, yeah, you had to ask, didn't you, Cakes? <clears throat> yeah, and it's all because of we owe Vinny for bringing old Hansel over. I really kind of like Hansel's bullshit sometimes, though. Yeah, well, I don't agree with it. I just, I well, what it is, I don't like the insulting people because of the country they're from or what they're married to and shit like that. But, yeah, fair game, you know. If you want to be a fag, I guess Hansel's going to be all over you. It was, it was a fag joke. You, you don't like that? Oh, yeah. Bombing on the dark table. Okay, so, let's see. But... Who are these people that we trust? I bet none of you right right now, without using your Google, could sit down and write five names of nine of the Supreme Court justices that rule our existence on Earth. Yep, these relics, all nine of them. Five Jews and some goyim for balance. Hey, well, it took us a while. We finally got there. And things are going to even get tighter. Oh, I can just imagine what they're going to do to you now. Ooh. Talk about your <clears throat> searches and seizures. I mean, hell, look what they do to Palestine. So, eh. And that's another story. I was talking about that with that. Uh, Did the invasion? That was a big farce, right? The invasion. There was no invasion. They, would they just put a bunch of links together and showed you pictures of shit and the next thing you know ah oh, we're being invaded from Nicaragua anyway Trump's put in the through the press that if if they throw rocks fire on them as if they were rifles and all that horse shit to get everybody all juicy and gooey and it worked too and most people forgot to vote there was a few people on the RLM that day that didn't vote but everybody else they were out you know what they were doing they were voting. And you know what's going to change? Everything. And you know how it's going to change? It's going to get fucking worse. And you know why? Because these fucking liars will not tell the truth. Never will. In fact, the first thing I posted today on the RLM was they've been lying to us about cannabis for 80 years. Now, I've said that and said that and said that. But I don't make memes. Now, we got a fella or a fellerette. Looks like a fella over at Minds.com named Standing Oak. And he posted uh, the moment you when you realize the government has been lying to us about cannabis for 80 years. And I thought, wow, how many people know that? I don't think a lot of people do. I think a lot of people are like hands. They think they know shit and the shit they know doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> Can't even prove it. It's just your word against mine on a computer screen. And we're going to argue back and forth about who's this and what's that. And then when you Google the fucking thing, you both get the same answer that suits you. doesn't matter what the truth is. The truth is not even participating in this life. We just look at the truth of sitting way down the road, waving at us, going, Hey, remember me. But I don't get a lot of... Uh, arguments about that either we live in a world of trickery 
and deceit. Based on fabrications and such about all the great things that our forefathers did. And, wow. Now, there, there's there's a comedian. He's really a, I don't know. He's one of those, got a problem with the world because he's Latin and didn't get recognized kind of guys. So he did a special about it, history. He called everybody a dumbass for not knowing it. Kind of pissed me off. I didn't like his delivery. It sucked. But the information was pretty good. You know, we, uh, we live today based on stories that are just all made up bullshit. Christopher Columbus. I, 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 I. Hmm. What would Ricky Ricardo say about Christopher Columbus? I mean, hmm. if you know the truth, then you know the truth. And if you know the story, then you probably don't have any idea what the hell I just said that for. Hmm. What a predicament to be in. Hmm. I guess we'll leave it without an explanation, because if you know, you know. And there's no reason to, to do a, a dork table going on about what some guy 500 years ago did or didn't do. We all know he didn't do anything. And if you don't know it, well, I'm disappointed in you because you must have went to school that day and listened to that stupid fucker up at the front of the room, you know, the one with the switch, waiting to swat you for not paying attention. Well, if you went to Catholic school, maybe they got penguins like that still. Who knows? I don't go to school. School is last resort for somebody that doesn't want to work. That's right. Huh, honey? Yes, Jim. Well, because if you go to school, then you learn how to do a job that's not work to you. So you might like it in some places. Not every place is like that, like where I'm from. What did they lead me towards in school? Fuck nothing. The door to leave, and usually when they were um, tossing me out for being disruptive. That was the attention in, that I remember the best was, that'll cost you three days. <laughs> I used to plan it so I'd have, you know, five-day weekends. But I got suspended. Why do I have to stay home? Hell, I'm going to the park. I'll see you later. What are they going to do? Throw me out of the park? I've been thrown out of school and and it was back when the cops didn't stop you and, hey, what are you doing out of school? We didn't even, I don't think we even had truant officers when I was 12, 13, 14, whatever. Back in the, back in the beginning of uh, the takeover of the education system. They did a good job on that shit, too. I don't think there's anything coming out of school that resembles the truth looks like the truth you know and it sounds good and if you're maybe a voter or something then you go wow aren't we great but dig a little bit deeper and you'll find out boy europe is a fucked up place all of it a bunch of invaders and even here denmark only they gave it up they did it for a few hundred years and went yeah you guys can invade it we're gonna we're gonna lay low and stop we're gonna take a a little siesta and uh now all the invading is done by... Who is doing the invading now? The Jews, America. Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's Jews in America. Well, there's nobody else. Oh, but the Russians are involved. Uh, yeah, sure. That's what they are. They're involved. Uh, anybody know any more than I do about it? Uh, I don't know much. Uh, who got lost on his way to the powwow? Hmm. Oh, wait, i got to read it from the bottom up, don't I? If I read it backwards, it will be more fun. Okay, it says Vinny and Cakes are having a giggle on the main feed of the reallibertymedia.com chat. It's been a very uneventful week for me here in Denmark. Because sick wife. I've had sick wife syndrome for about 10 days now. About Well, it feels like 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> she's getting better though but she she was um, a little congested congested to the point of oh i i can't stay and listen to that i i go downstairs and do stuff <laughs> so things are back to normal now i'm glad to report but boy what a time to get sick right before her birthday too she's going to be 
She'll be old tomorrow. When she wakes up, she's going to magically be a whole year older than she is today. Yeah, she, not only just a year, but she'll be officially in her 40s, according to state and local authorita, right? Because we all know we live to please the state and local authorita. When I'm not pleasing state and local authorita, why I'm, uh, what would I be doing? Hmm. Yeah, I'm growing avocados. Well, only one. I uh, Still, I'm getting growth in November out of a... Uh, avocado seed I started a couple of, about, what, two months ago? Something like that. So it's probably going to die a slow death, but <laughs> spring will bring anything back around here. Spring spring makes the, the weeds in your rock gardens grow in this part of the world. It's pretty uh, amazing. It's like living in a forest, what, like a jungle forest, right? Except we don't need the machetes because the weeds don't get that big. But very green and very lush kind of place. I like it. Little duckies downtown. Haven't been downtown. Haven't done anything. Wow. I must be getting old. Have to stay home and take care of my wife and all her needs when she's ill. I'm glad she's finished with all that shit. Yeah, stop doing that to me, sir. It's very annoying. Yeah, Grimner says a big happy birthday, sir. Uh, a little early. Yeah, well, yeah, but tomorrow she's uh, she won't be available because she's going to be doing her birthday shit with her mom and whatnot, I think. Oh, maybe not. Maybe she's going to stay home. I don't know. She's as predictable. Well, I'm very predictable. Dark table, Saturday, in a perfect world, Tuesday. There you go. Right? I've come a long way. I'm telling you. Hmm. And Dork Cakes is all about the most auspicious dates and gal, 11, 11. Yep. And oddly enough, my little brother's birthday is the same, 11, 11. Kind of freaked me out when I heard her tell me. I thought, wow, what are the odds? Hmm. I mean, at the time, I didn't know I was going to marry her. I just knew she had a birthday that was my brother's. But who gets married to somebody that's birthday is the same as their brother? What kind of weird thing is this? I'm trying to set a, you know, a, a precedent for future couples. If you want your shit to work out good, marry a girl that has a birth date like your brother. And if you ain't got a brother, go find one. Make one. Talk to your parents, you know. <laughs> it's never too late to have a brother so that... Well, there you go. Then you know what birthday the girl that you meet has to have to fit your mold, right? <laughs> what a coincidence. It's like I planned it. Yeah. Boy, I'll tell you. My, I think, who? Uh, yeah, my dad, my dad was two days before Adolf. But my mother-in-law, she hit that son of a bitch right on the fucking head, right at 420. <laughs> it's very abusing to me. But kind of like her she's like my dad in some ways very keeps to herself you don't know what she's thinking until you ask her and then once you ask her you go hmm maybe that wasn't such a swell idea because <laughs> you know people like us if you go hey what are you thinking sometimes you're better off not saying anything uh, Rob Work says he can hear the coffee I've been pumping her full of vitamin C and what other stuff that she'll accept, you know, orangey juice. But yeah, she, she caught the bronchitis from hanging out with people at work. That's right. This didn't happen because she was out drinking all night in some sleazy bar in Copenhagen. This is a direct result of being a responsible adult, which is why I'm so just not for all that being an adult crap. It, uh, yeah, she's that's the kind she likes. I got her some real um, fancy kind of Lipton. They got a, a thing about it here. It's kind of like Earl Grey with a with a kick, right, Zerk? What is that stuff called that I get you? Same thing. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't know if she'll 
I got her lemons the other day, and uh, she I seen the honey out, so I don't know. She doesn't take advice very well. I wonder who that makes you think of. Kind of sounds like me. Hey, stop coughing. They can hear you all the way to all the way to New Mexico. They can hear you. <laughs> uh, dark Dark Cakes put a cartoon on for you called Circles. I'll copy it and send it. Where should I send it? Anywhere? Or just copy? Here, I'll just open it and try not to play it. Let's see if I can accomplish this without killing everybody in the room. Anybody got a taste for fava beans? Uh, Hannibal Lecter. Oh, see, I knew it. Ah, see, I knew it. Uh, it's a F Fred Flintstone-ish looking cartoon. Yeah, when she gets over this being a sick shit, <laughs> till then, uh, you hug her. <laughs> I'm kidding, Rob. <laughs> yeah, but Grim, there, I, I'm limited here. Uh, you know, I'm not living in the big city anymore. So you know, and Cirque doesn't shop. So she she could go to the specialty shop down in Copenhagen. They've got like eight billion different kinds of fucking tea and bins and you make your own bags of it's very impressive but Cirque doesn't shop so she gets what I get and I don't go to the good places <laughs> I'm far too lazy for all that Van Meter says happy birthday mm. Vinny's spreading across the ocean I don't know why Vinny did you, did you fall down and bump your head again you know how things, you know, they go by you real fast. Uh, yeah, no, I'll do, I, I will. And I did before the show because she was cooking dinner and I was hungry. So I gave her the big hug. said, hmm, food. <laughs> That's the way us Jews do, people. Yeah, when, when you're, you're willing to cook for us, then, then we'll hug you. But if you don't, if you're not willing to cook for us or give us money, nah, not so much on the hugging. What do you think, sir? I I just know I tend to hug people more when they do my bidding or cook for me. When they don't, I don't really want to hug you. What for? <laughs> oh, what's in it for me? <laughs> I mean, crying out loud. If it's good enough for Congress, I guess it's good enough for you. Crying out loud. Religion, people. Remember, it's the most important thing. It runs all your lives. So being as it runs all your lives, I'm going to be on the winning side of that argument every time. Ah, that's right. I'm going to go for the people you can't fuck with. Hmm. I don't know what to do about that. It really kind of burns my biscuits to sit here and think about what a bunch of weirdos the public is to treat people certain ways according to certain stories that they heard without really any proof of it well i don't know some of these history books are pretty convincing when you read them but if you look at the results that we live in they never seem to match the words that you read in the paper hmm. i wonder wonder who cares where hands across the water is oh look at that the wife has brought <sighs> the favorite smoke of the people of Earth. And I'm going to 420 for everybody at 424. I was close. Don't get on me here, Vincenzo. Red alert, red alert, hands across the water, hands across the water, hide. Hmm. Well... I don't know. I ain't afraid of Hans. I think Hans is just a... He's just a comedian that fell and bumped his head a couple times. Not much else explains insulting groups of people based on the country they're from. I find that rather cheap and annoying. Unless it's America. And then even I don't do that. All Americans aren't all anything. If anything, I argue the point. You got 50 fucking states. What's united about it? I think it's a... I think everything that we are told is bullshit. Therefore, everything I say is some form of bullshit, too. But within the bullshit, 
<clears throat> there's a gem or two. Just dig through it. That is why we have soap and water. So that when we have to dig through the bullshit to get to the truth, we got a way to get cleaned up when we're done. Because it's a nasty fucking job. My personal favorite. I don't know if I have a favorite. But between medicine and finance, it's... Well, I don't know. You can't really... You can't burn people on either one of those two without the other one. If it's not medical, I, there's not too many ways that'll guarantee crushing a, a, a family that lives on, say, six or eight figures. It, besides giving them a nice dose of cancer to fight for five or ten years. And all the expense that you go through and all the worry and even the problems that come from having the, that problem. And all along, could have fixed it with baking soda. But nobody tells you, you know. There's no books on it. I don't know. Maybe there are books on it. But we have the internet. So what the the enemy of the internet <coughs> is this concept of fake news. So now, oh, that's bullshit. Well, I think Rob simplified it <laughs> for me by... You know, it's, they all suck. So everything they say is crap. Everything. Don't believe none of it. There you go. So if you even, like Mary, I hear Mary hanging on to that, you know, society thing sometimes. You know, in my humble opinion. And I don't know. And in some ways she's letting go. And in other ways she wants to grab tighter and punish somebody for doing the unthinkable. And I believe that it's re it's the responsibility of the s of the society that raised that mentality in the first place. There's people alive today that are not violent. There were people alive thousands of years ago. <laughs> they weren't violent either. But well, Cortez had other ideas, and things changed, and boom, here we are, all these years later. Now, my version of the story and the comedians are going to be way different because he, he had a stake in it. And he was whining about being left out of history and all, da, 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 and all that. It doesn't really matter to me. I think everybody's been left out of history. I think the things that were, were taught to be considering, oh, these things are so monumental. Well, maybe that was, but the reason behind having that done, you'll never know it. And if you do know it, you'll be like one in a hundred people, maybe. And of that one in a hundred people, nine of them don't give a fuck one way or the other. Nothing you can do about it. Might as well just look the other way. And here we are looking the other way. And you know what I saw the other day in the sky? They're spraying us like bugs with something in the sky coming out of airplanes. And then you say that to people and they go, oh yeah, you're one of those conspiracy dorks okay but harp exists and this shit they've been doing seed in the clouds i was watching a movie from the 50s yesterday and part of their defense was seeding the clouds in the movie from the 1950s so between then and now it's common and the explanation for what they're doing has been misrepresented to the different people at different times for different purposes so we all hear a different story and nobody knows what the fuck the truth is so it's not about like giving everybody one direction it's about giving everybody a different direction and the more people you can get to follow the more people you can put out there to follow the easier the whole fucking thing works for a certain few so you got taxes and roads, all this useless fucking shit that in the overall, it at one point in time, it, it served a purpose. Well, now, now we got all these brainiacs trying to figure out how to cut out the middleman, make it all automated. We're going to have automated everything. Even your car will drive itself. and You can just sit there and look at it. So I've watched the society just suck the fun out of life almost on a daily basis for 
I started noticing in the middle 70s. It's probably about 15 or 16. Things that you could do started to change. Went, hey, wait a minute. I don't like being told what to do. What the hell's going on here? And everybody else told me to shut up and, hey, you're making a big thing out of nothing. Be quiet. Hmm. Well, most of them are dead now. So, I don't think they were right. I think uh, whatever I came out of this with, whatever knowledge I managed to gather, it served my purpose as far as uh, surviving and being semi-healthy. And that's about all I ever thought for. I didn't go for all the money shit and whatnot. But I, I did... Uh, I spent quite a bit of my time maybe active, you know, so that I wouldn't just sit and stagnate. Even when I do my damn jigsaw puzzle, the thing is so big, I've got it on this damn dining room size table, and it's so big I have to walk around the table to work on it because I can't, can't see and reach from one side to the other, so I have to stand over where I'm at. It's kind of a a hindrance, but I see things in a certain fashion that this works with. And I'm constantly up and down, constantly, you know, for hours at a time with this, with these hobbies I acquire. Whatever I do, like a, if I was going to paint a house, I'd do it with a hand brush instead of a roller. And up and down the ladder, up and down the ladder, because I can't reach the ceiling without a ladder. I'm a small fry guy with a, without a ladder. Huh, honey? Huh? Let's see, even Cirque said so. Okay, let's see what's going on in the reallibertymedia.com. Yeah, it's kind of quiet. We got Grimner and Vinny. <laughs> Rob works. <laughs> Mental pancakes. Well, he's dork cakes over here. But and if you guys haven't checked it out yet, go over to realliberty.org. Grab a page over there. It's uh, it's the face back, Facebook format kind of looking page, you know, where you got links and stuff to that kind of setup but uh i don't know it's uh broken in by now most of the people there know know each other now there was a little influx recently and somebody came over and brought some friends but we all know that leaving facebook to go anywhere most people don't do it again it's with the numbers maybe one out of a one out of a hundred i actually leave and go somewhere else and stay gone the rest of them, they keep their Facebook open because that's where my family and my friends are at. Well, I look at the results and figure if my family and friends care enough about me, they know how to find me. They can find ways. I'm not hiding from anybody. So, therefore, but everybody else says, oh, I can't, I got to be on Facebook. So I got instant da, 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 with my little pals and palettes. Me, I don't know. I'm not all that big on human contact with relatives that I don't live with and all that. Every, nah. Like even Cirque's closest to her sister and her nephews. The two nephews play um, lore with her on the line. So, <coughs> Huh? Whoops. Wrong game. Wow. Not lore. I play lore. They play wow. Yeah, face back. Yeah, but Vinny, think about it. I mean, you know. To cut yourself loose, it's, it's like walking away from the United States, you know, separating. I mean, you got to think about it. these people that are settled down with their routines and their their nine to five jobs. They come home at a certain time and dinner's on the table like Archie Bunker, that kind of crap. You can't you can't tell those people anything new. They don't want to know. They want to live in the past when things were good. Well, the problem is, is that. It's gradually gotten worse since it started. I think people had a better way of living back when they started the country than they do now. Overcrowded, boy. Stick stick five, six million people in one area that small and then be surprised. Sit back and be surprised because you got violence. Well, uh, they did laboratory experiments. I mean, I know I've done this show 50 times and said this about it but they did lab lab rats 
they used them to see what would happen if you overpopulate them and you don't give them enough food and you don't give them enough water. And what they found was you get society. Nature breeds murderers and thieves if you don't balance nature. Well, maybe not don't, but what is what is uh, balanced by us? If we have any control into it, man will fuck it up every time. And they'll even go out of their way to experiment to see just how can we fuck this up to get a certain result. And then they lie to us because if you look at the results, there's no way this is a fuck up. This is as planned as you can possibly get. It's probably planned better than we can imagine. And most of the crap that I hear people whining about, uh, what's that? NSA. That was my favorite one. You know, the NSA, the NSA, all day long with the NSA. So here we got, what What did the government do? They put up some multi-million dollar building in Utah, okay, where there's no fucking water area around it to cool it. And Utah can get pretty warm, so it's just like, wow, hmm doesn't really make a lot of sense you could have put it on a river or something but no they put it in the middle of a desert in utah and that's the the main place of the people that are spying on you nah it's worse than that that's probably the nice side of it because whatever we do get is always let me how the fuck did they fluoridate the water for how long has that gone on hmm. let me look i will do a an interesting search. Uh, while I'm talking, that might not work out too well. Um, but I'm going to ask it, when was... Spell it right. But I'm going to ask it about fluoride. And see what it says. Because I know what fluoride is. It's a chemical waste product. And they knew that when they did it. But they marketed it as good for you. And here we are all these years later and they're still adding it to the fucking uh, products that we use people they put it in uh, everything from toothpaste to uh, makeup let's see water fluoridation when did it start <laughs> fluoridation in Australia fluoridation by country by country these fucking pricks what they did wow you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about then well, you're probably drinking a lot of it. <laughs> it's it's kind of obvious. But I guess I can understand the confusion because you go, well, but the government wouldn't do anything to hurt me. And that's the part where the, you know, mom and dad should sit little Johnny down and teach him the truth, but they don't, you know. You know why? Because... Mom and Dad are trying to save little Johnny a, an ass whooping at school, cause Johnny's gonna go to school and say, "Hey, my dad says you guys are all full of shit and all this crap's a bunch of nonsense." And then after school, and everybody's gonna wanna punch little Johnny in the face for saying that because they don't want to have their illusion eliminated. Yeah. I want to live in an illusion, so I got one. But I don't drag other people into my illusion physically, screaming and kicking, shooting at them, bombing them, threatening to foreclose on their fucking mortgage. Um, all those good things that, you know, voters are responsible for paying for enforcement to do. You know, arresting people for smoking weed that after all these years, what? You don't turn into a bat when you smoke pot? That's not what Assholian said in Congress years ago. And fucked it up for everybody else. <clears throat> yeah, Vinny Devolution, but you know that guy that talks with uh, Clint, Clint Richardson. Uh, Brian, I think was his name. Brian? I can't remember his name. I'm very bad with names. But he was. they did many shows about the inoculations and the results and why they happened at a... A level of science that was beyond me at the time because I am not a real big science guy. But it made sense in their explanation. You know, oddly enough, just common sense tells you 
that the human body is not designed to have things jabbed into it. And then after they jab into you, shoved in further into your bloodstream? No. No, 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 no. Something is way wrong with this. Ah, uh, disorder till death. Ooh, oh my goodness. It's all in perception. Well, yeah, absolutely, Rob. But other people think that they have an understanding of your perception. Now, I tend to agree with Rob more than most folks on the reallibertymedia.com chat about his his political stand, the way he sees the system. And it's not a popular. Grimm's okay with it. I think Grimm's pretty much like that. Now, Vinny, sometimes Vinny makes me wonder because he's Vinny's Vinny. You know, that's what I mean is we are not a unit unified group of any fucking thing we're a bunch of people that all have different ideas about how shit should work and then we look at each other and then try to describe what the other guy told us he said and you're hearing it with your own fucking brain you're never gonna know what the other guy meant you're only gonna know what you want it to mean (laughs) it's it's a wonderful game that's why i I never get excited about uh, being popular a lot of people are gonna get my opinion it's going to change their life and they're going to find out that Rockefeller medicine is a scam and then they'll get hit by a bus because they didn't need their GPS anymore well that joke just went to shit but you know I was trying to make the point of you know what isn't important today and then you get rid of it and all of a sudden you need it back (laughs) And that's what people won't let go of. I know that from experience beyond most people's ability to have that experience. Oh, they're killing the ducks. Vinny's probably got his bottle of lotion out doing the duck killed fucking yank. I know. Vinny makes even grim. Vinny makes everyone wonder. Well, that's Vinny's way. Hmm. But what I appreciate about him is that he'll get on the radio and back his mouth up. If you got something to say, tell him. I have. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you've been down with no no decent equipment for a couple of weeks. You know, take a break and you know. But we'll you'll be back. A day without Vinny is like a day without Vinny. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, Dork Cakes is playing music while I'm doing. The Dork Table Podcast, live on the reallibertymedia.com channel. I think it's channel 10. I've heard Mary say it a couple times, but I don't pay attention if you say it or not what channel. Um, Grimner, cause I listen to the replays, so I'm more interested in I what you say after hellos than anything, you know. You don't usually tell too many stories until you get the, the moose girl on and you know, the formalities done with that I know. Maybe I'm wrong. I haven't heard you this week yet. I'm going to do your um, do the Freakers Ball on Monday, I think. Are you working this week? Yeah, I do it on Monday so I can play it really loud and annoy everybody. Except Cirque because she'll be at work. Yeah, she's been off work. Poor thing. But eh, you'd be glad to get back to work? Uh, she said, yeah, she wasn't supposed to say, yeah, she was supposed to say, no, I want to stay home and be a bum like you. (laughs) Oh, wow. Life. See, I mean, if you can't punk your own wife live on the radio, who the fuck can you punk? That was an excellent pause for a sip of my elixir. Two. Oh, Grammy's Channel 10. Okay, that's what it is. I I don't even have a channel then. I'm channelless. Oh. Oh no, I have no channel. What will I ever do? I don't know. I think I think I'll live through it. Or whatever it means. Oh, Grimner says he hasn't made one. Well, if you if you ever feel like it, you go ahead and if you don't, then don't. I don't 
I don't really care. I know how to find it when I get in a mood to hear what the hell I said to you guys the other day. <laughs> and sometimes it's not bad. Uh, other times I think, wow, boy. Hmm. I must be older than I thought if I'm noticing little children with green hair. You know, that once upon a time it was just common to see everybody all freaked out and weird. It kind of got normal. Then I moved away from L.A. <laughs> and then things settled down a little bit and over the years. And now well, I'm an older guy. So now when I see little little people with multiple colored hair, I, I, sh I don't think I'm shocked. I think it just gets the artist in me just got to see, hey, I wonder what you're thinking about, you little monster. You know, because kids got shit going on too i wonder if they're running around hey i've got green hair i wonder if i make this long-haired guy smile at me with it you know you never know because kids aren't vicious like grown-ups being vicious that takes a lot of training you know a lot of practice it's like the difference between me and cirque she has not spent a lot of time around people that weren't nice to her <laughs> I mean, to me, that's kind of obvious because she's all, almost always in a good mood. Even with this freaking cold, for, I mean, bad. This is a bad cold. Bad, bad, bad. I was very disappointed she got it. <laughs> and anyway, uh, hey, Vinny's putting up bragging rights for Denmark. It's still, even though it's better for some shit, it's still a country. And I think that we could do better without this stuff than we do with it. With just a simple agreement to tell the truth if if there, you don't need to punish people for not telling the truth it, what needs to be done is to make things obsolete in the sense of there's no reason to steal you know there is no reason to get violent with somebody else and these are things that you need to teach people but the the presentation they got on tv about how how they talk to each other is pathetic, you know. Nah, uh, I don't agree with um, being too wishy washy and pussifying kids, making them all, you know, they're afraid to say fuck because they might get in trouble. Why? They said a word. Okay, where's the crime? Huh? <laughs> you know, they're, we're all back to that shit again. But I don't find. Uh, I don't find there should be like a punishment for the, the shit people do that irritates me. I think the punishment for doing it is them doing it because it shows other people what they're like. And that's not always something you want other people to see. I mean, if I had a, a particular hatred for a certain group of people, the Jews, um, I would expose the Jews as a fraud to my knowledge, to the way I understand what we're facing in our financial life. This group of people, the Jews, have, they've, they're pretending to be the Jews, that we're, we're, we're not allowed to fight them. There's no international law to apply to the Jews. They're above everybody. They can do whatever they like. It's in writing. Look it up. It's fascinating. And that's why, like last week, I said, well, shit, when push comes to shove, I'm two steps ahead of everybody else. You know, if you ain't got the, the nose and the nuts, well, you might not get in the door. <laughs> hey, he's got the circumcision. Look at that nose. No. <laughs> uh, and Moose Girl says, fuck it, he fuck, fuck. Yeah, that. That's exactly it. Because, well, I don't know. I'm not offended by words. Sometimes I'm offended by words representing foul ideas. But when somebody tells me I'm a drug addled hippie and uh, I only do things because my wife yells at me to do them. Or, I don't He's gone off all kinds of weird shit. And I just find it kind of amusing. But uh, hmm. insulting? No. And the insulting part would be when you start calling the English cunts and hiding behind their women and all this kind of shit. And then the 
the guy that's in the room is in living in Scotland. <laughs> and he's on the RLM chat that you just wrote all this shit. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still amazed. I read that. On, anyway, uh, it, it was a fun memory. See, what would I do without Hansel? He gives me these memories of his interactions that I would never do. Mm-mm-mm. Oh no, 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 no! You don't know. I'd go for your intellectual throat, but not your, uh, not your belly button throat. That's kind of unfair, you know. Because some people, some Jewish people, even like me, Jewish, you know, where you're into this thing because of a fucking relative or whatever, take it as seriously as you want to. I guess go to the synagogue, learn how to speak Hebrew, and read and write it, and find out what the Old Testament meant, and then go, holy fuck, I got to kill all these people. Shit, it's a job. So what they figured out to do is to get us to kill each other. Because I'm part Jew, so I'm not probably good enough to be a Jew. Like, I'm like Jew light. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm trying to find a way to describe it, because I'm not interested in their shit in the first place. But, again, it goes to the birth certificate and all these other things, the religions. and It's it's all commerce, right? So, for some reason, at some levels of religion, they would accept me. But, probably there'd be a doorway I couldn't get through eventually because I wasn't deep enough in the gang. You know, like uh, being a Catholic, you know. Everybody just don't go, hey, Pop, what you doing there? Hey, want to grab some nuts there, Pop? Come here, buddy. No, you got to go through the thing and you know most of his shit's <laughs> private i'm sure you don't see it on cable tv <laughs> the meeting with the pope went well you wipe your chin stupid you're not gonna be taking your picture but a lot of people don't like that they go hey you're being a prick to the catholics I said yeah you should hear the way i talk about the jews i think it's all and then you got the Muslims. Wow, what a fucking group of weirdos we are. People that won't do this because it's this day. And they only pray in that direction because, well, I guess they don't think the ball's spinning in any damn way. So their guy hangs out in the same spot. I don't. How do you explain that? Praying to Mecca? Uh, I don't know. So you got poking little kids taking other people's money or bowing a lot to some holy old dead guy. And I nah, I don't think so. I'm going to go with none of the above. And it's not to say there's not no God, because there could very well be a God. It's just not likely the way that it's explained to us what there is. You know, it would be... Uh, Something that was better for us instead of just good for the leaders of the world. Because they get all the fucking props for all this religious shit. What do we get? Well, we get to pay for it if you go pray and leave your money at the altar of the bleeding something or fucking another. I don't know. Hold on. I'm going to finish off my magic elixir. One second. I have no idea who Vince is talking to, but um, hmm, he's talking about moving uh, in a perfect world is landed on those two spots. You'll move them to their new spots from there. I don't know. He must be trying to get Grimner to do something because that sounds very techy. You want me? To change the author for the In a Perfect World podcast blogs from you to Flash? Is that what you mean? And he said, please. You're welcome, Grimner. Ha, 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 ha. I mean, Vinny. Ha, 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 ha. Says Grim. I don't know where the hell I went with that. I think I need another. Uh, hmm. We'll just improvise here. We have many at the ready. So where are we at today? We're, um, I guess, stuck watching this TV show about, you know, how the world's a fucked up place and everything and everybody in it's 
hating each other and all this horse shit, right? So, I don't see any of that. I'm still looking over there. I see my wife knitting on her couch by her dog. And, you know, it's a peaceful, quiet little house. And uh, Got my headphones on, talking on the chitter-chatter machine about my weekly adventure. Sadly, I didn't do anything. I was very hobbit-like this week and stayed in. And uh, using my wife as a excuse for not going out but i still managed to find the time to go fetch her uh, what was that knitting uh, yarn that's that's one of the things i i kind of like to do actually and it's really strange but i can go to the store now and uh have my note in my hand <clears throat> and i think i know and there's only two aisles it's not complicated <clears throat> and every time i do it i pick the wrong place Wherever the, the stuff I need to get is not where I'm looking. And, and there's only two choices. So, the guy that runs it's a rock hound. And he does jewelry and shit. And he's always real real nice with me. And he just, oh, here, it's over here. And then he, he just goes through the, um, the whole thing and gets everything for me. And, wow. <laughs> and it's not a lot of money to buy a little bit of yarn. So, you know, it's just being a... a Nice guy doing it, you know, doing his wife's business while she's not there. And I still think a lot of it. And it makes it easier for me, you know, because I'm out there in that foreign country without the language looking for something girly. But like I've said, the thing that watches over me made sure that the store that I went to to get that shit had a guy that spoke English and had uh, hobbies like rock hounding so that I'd have a reason to, you know, be warmer and, you know, have something in common, not be just, Oh, how are you? I need, I need some yarn. This is my note, you know, to, Hell, you got rocks here. Hey, what's that? <laughs> and once you, you start uh, a salesman and you ask them a question, then you don't have to say much after that. You just get your pen out and start writing notes. And then when they write the order up, you know, will that be cash or a charge? Because that's what people do in the real world. They do commerce with each other. Now, the day that uh, I can't go into town anymore to go do that, Cirque can replace all that online with companies that will deliver whatever she wants right to the door. And she's replaced me on a few things like the dog. The dog had her food delivered through the mail. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and the guy hands me this box and it's like, hey, wait a minute. This is a heavy box. What the hell did Cirque order this time? Because I, I forget from one day to the next. I don't I don't know what she's done. And it was the dog food. So now I don't have to go out to go get that. See, but I would. But my wife, in her, you know, kindness, yeah, nah, she she was being nice to me, and she took the dog food, you know, the dog food thing. You know, I, little stuff like that, it matters to me. You know, when people make your life easier, and not a lot of people do that. I haven't had, um, haven't had a lot of experience with other f people going out of their way to make my day go, hey, that was a piece of cake. Usually, when there's other people involved, whatever you're doing gets tripled, or sometimes more. Uh, what did I say? Uh, maybe it's not me, but I see cakes is a laughing on the RLM chat. Oh, uh, because Grimner and Vinny are communicating in word on the screen so Grimm's not getting exactly what Vinny wants him. Ah he is oh yeah, Arkansian. Is that what it's Arkansian? Vinian <laughs> like a yam <laughs> Yeah, you're like a yam. There you go, Vinny. What will we see and then we got Vinny, you know? What will we do without Vinny to come and throw a little shit at the wall to see what was gonna stick? <laughs> I see Van Meter's been popping 
back and forth with her telephone apparatus trying to get into the RLM chat. And Vinny noticed. Ah, uh, she smiled back. <clears throat> That's it. We got a quiet little chat room today. And then my wife. Ah, uh, she's over there knitting. Boy, what it, see, this excitement is so overwhelming. You know, it gives me a lot of time to sit and what would you call it? Ponder, I guess, ponder reality because the reality is different than the reading material. The reading material tells me I need to, you know, go get me a Hannibal Lecter cookbook and get a taste for fava beans because in the not so distant future, I'm going to be eating my neighbors, you know, as a source of sustenance. Hmm. I find it quite hard to believe just from the little bit of time. Nah. I think the the bigger the cities that you're in are and the more millions of people you got crowded in the smaller areas, that's where it's going to hurt. Not not the rural. rural that's, that's why they, the, the city went against being rural the way they did for so long. Made you go to the city. And, well, I don't know. I remember a lot of people went, that I'd met along the road always wanted to go to a city i was always going to a city one the city to go to that city mm. but there wasn't like millions of people like me out there in the first place there was just a just a handful of us that would just pack like vinny vinny still i i retired because of the cirque but um vinny didn't <laughs> vinny still drop of a hat something might come up okay i'm going Ha, huh, Ponder Gander boy. I know I'm so. Um, eh, I know it's, but it's so, so mundane. These mundane things, Zane Meter, have just got my attention because, one, I didn't expect to live this fucking long. Way before I met Cirque, I didn't expect this. And now here I am, and I'm going, wow. And feeling better. Still better today. I got a little bit of that cold. Thank you, honey. But not much. You know, what? I I jumped on that vitamin C. Boom, 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 boom. And my nose was running. Well, compared to Cirque, that's not a big... That, that was a small, small cold. But I do the radio and yak my, my mouth for two hours. And my, uh, my vocal cords and such, they need to be watered regularly but if i was sick oh i don't think i would want to be here chitter chattering about nothing what would i do hmm. i can't think of a fucking topic today don't back talk me in the back over there about what i need i was reading the chat they're not giving me nothing to work with and so I, some days are worse than others well you know what not only have I not been invited to a book burning, but um, no Republican fundraisers. No Republican fundraisers. Uh, I think I'd be good at that, though. Raising money for the Republicans as a comedian. <laughs> Boy, I could tell some punk, uh, what do you could, like roasting Donald Trump. But I'd probably roast him with a flamethrower, you know, because I don't, I don't like Trump. But you want to hear what's worse? I don't like any of those politicians, any of them, not one. If you're willing to do it now, nah, at that level, keep it small. If you're going to do it at all, if you want to, you know, do something for your, your locals. But then again, it's all about the big shit around that. So it's not really about local interests at all. It's about people making money off the big people. That's politics. Eh. You could take your politics. And write them all down on a piece of paper, and then take that piece of paper and install that up your nose. That's what I think of your politics. That's probably the nicest way to put that. Up, up, and away. Aha. Yeah, I used to, too, Vinny. Well, I remember the, still the first time I was um, going to England. I'd never been out of the U.S. Uh, until that. As far as like flying goes, that was my first escape with a big airliner, and it made it from San Francisco 
to Heathrow Airport. And it took forever to get to that. Wow, it's a long way. Because mm. every time you go forward, they kept adding time to my sentence. You know, man, by the time we got to London, it was like tomorrow. It was long, long, long. Whoa. <sighs> I was glad it was over when I landed, I'll tell you that. Mm. But the first thing that happens is I show up there. I'm American. My father's American. And my mother's English. And you know, here I am with a one-way, you know, I get a one-way ticket because I didn't know how long I wanted to stay. And they didn't know how long they wanted me to stay. So they just said, well, you get six months on your visa and we'll deal with it. When you want to go, you just go. Well, the guy at customs, I had one of those newbies. <laughs> and he didn't like talking to me. I don't know what it was. It must have been my accent. So anyway, my my father takes him off to the side and they chitter chatter for a few minutes. And all of a sudden, the paper's stamped and I'm in the country. I couldn't even be bothered to ask him at the time, what the hell did you say that? Because this guy was good, definitely looked at me and decided he was going to give me grief. Then my dad, who had a really good way with this, he did it with the cops once well, over a speeding ticket too. Uh, well, it wasn't a speeding ticket. It was a, a, a turning ticket. I apparently cut this cop off into traffic. Anyway, so my dad gets me out of this ticket. And then years, a couple years later, I'm landing at Heathrow and having trouble getting through. And he's saying, I'll talk to him, talk to him. Boom, I'm in. And there you go. Now, here we are all these years later. And it's I, there was no searches. I Nobody... Uh, well, there was searching my stuff, but there wasn't this patting me down and putting me through the x-ray machine to check out my spleen and all that. That crap still in 89. I don't think I don't, I don't remember it like that. That was a few years after that. Because in 89, when I was in England, you could still smoke on the bus. And they just, that year I was there, the I think the second time I went, 90, 90 or 91, they finally, that's when they changed the law and said, you can't smoke on the buses anymore. So they, you know, one more little little liberty, I guess, if you're a smoker. If you're a non-smoker, then, you know, oh, good, I got to take that away from you. <laughs> but if you're a smoker, hey, wait a minute, you're taking that away from me. And that's how they, how they do us. But they do it with so, so much stuff over and over. It's always in something. I mean, what haven't we had threatened or taken away from us or threatened to be taken away i like the rights thing i think they're gonna make a bazillion fucking quadrillion dollars off this magic words ready for this people we're gonna take guns away that's all you gotta say right there you hear people you can hear people loading cleaning gun oil is in the air people are cleaning their guns they're naming their bullets. You know, oh, I can't wait for a battle. I got guns and bullets. And, you know, we got all this shit beaten into us. Well, if you don't have one, the government will take you over. Well, has anybody noticed around but me or that the government's gone and took you over and you're armed and it doesn't fucking matter? You're still ticking over? So... Whether you have a gun right or not have a gun right, if you got a gun, <laughs> it ain't doing you no good about the threat of the government's going to take it from you. So, what are you going to do if the government decided to do that? You going to argue about that? Eh, nope, you can't have my gun over my cold, dead, click, boom, body. <laughs> That's the way they do. It's not very attractive. Oh, uh oh, Moose is having some kind of problems. Uh, Bob, <laughs> the fire is on the other side of 101. Oh no! Wow. Yeah, Malibu's gonna go up. I wonder. See, I saw that earlier. I've been reading. Oh, Kate's been talking to somebody about it, and I was noticing. Yeah, fires in California. Blah, blah, blah. And the first thing that hit my mind was. <laughs> If they're going to burn Malibu down, oh, man, there's insurance claims coming. Or maybe that's just another way to get the Jews out of the California before it just goes up. 
<laughs> Malibu is a little, it's a nice little pocket. Had a little bit of money in it when I was there in the, where one, 98, 98 or 99. I did some, did some work out there with an electrician for a while. And it's just sad to see all this stuff, you know, my old country piece of shit. The state I'm from, insane asylum. You know, and then the the places I used to frequent in my home, you know, piece of shit, insane asylum place. Now they're all going up in smoke or earthquakes or water shortages or I don't know. I haven't heard any good news come out of politics ever. <laughs> I don't know the last time political guy got, hey, the good news is, well, no, wait. Hansel. Trump got elected just as he predicted. Now, <laughs> I get such a kick out of Hansel. <laughs> he only had two choices. <laughs> you, you pick one and you hope it don't rain. I mean, come on. <laughs> but I, I like it when he adds that. Just as I predicted. And then he tells you what he predicted. <laughs> Ah, someday I'm going to do that. <laughs> Just as I predicted, the sun came up. And and it was there in the sky. And the children laughed. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, uh, Vinny, I am. Hey, there you go. Is that better? Vinny, I am? <laughs> we're, having, we're having Vinny Wars on. On the Rudy Media dot com, I don't I don't know why that made me giggle, but and cough at the same time. Okay, but now I've known Vinny a few years now, and he's he's a character. Vinny, Vinny goes and hangs out with people that uh, are trying to get their self shot by the government for hobby, and then he tells them, "Well, I'm not here on anybody's side. I'm just here to report what I see." You know, when you do shit like that, nobody likes you very much. They go, hey, wait a minute. What if uh, I don't want you to report what I do? You know? Well, then go to a chat room and hide behind a screen and pretend you're, pretend you're somebody you're not, like everybody else does. Come on. Mm. Oh, I can feel the, the crackle in my throat from the, uh, from the cold. Oh, and this is as bad as I've been in years, so, wow. I'm not doing so bad. I'm probably going to go do some puzzle when I'm done here with my dork table program. But I can't, nothing, see, I've done the show alone and I can't think of anything original, what comes to mind. And yeah, I've made fun of everything. Eh, okay, so you didn't get your invasion. Huh? My being Mexican? Oh, about the election. Yeah, but I don't know anything about the elections. I don't know who ran. I don't care who ran. I don't. E I didn't even know what day it was. Uh, the Senate and the House. You know, the unimportant positions that don't matter. <laughs> this is the attitude of the fucking public. They get, they, boy, they hear POTUS and they're out there voting 20, 30, 40 million. And they hear Senate and state and they don't even show up. So, Wow. Because, you know, like Archie said, I'm saving my vote for the big one that matters. When it, it's the opposite. The POTUS doesn't matter. POTUS, POTUS is going to do what the Congress tells them to do. That's the part that people have a real hard time grabbing the hold of. Because the appearance is, oh, the Trump can come and veto it. Da, 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 da. Well, look at it a little bit closer sometime. It's not the way you think it is. And half the shit that they pass is bills. Nobody fucking reads them. They just, hey, you voting? No? Okay, we'll vote for you. Anyway. But seriously, think about it. They did it with the Federal Reserve Bank. So if they could do it with that, they could do it with anything. And they probably have. I don't see any progress come and go 
from this government shit. It's just a one big step. You know, it's like a big, ugly, fucking smelly, nasty foot. That, you know, like somebody stepped in shit, and then they, they then after that they knocked you down, and then they put that foot that they stepped the shit in, then they rub that in your fucking face and mush it all in. You know, that's what government's like. <laughs> If that tells you I do not like government, please leave me alone. I know the erection. Even Moose Girl is making fun of the selection, calling it the erection. I wouldn't have been that bold. I would have been more subtle. But I ain't no Moose Girl. So, ah, 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 ah. Anyway, I don't know, fuck, selections. Um. What if I'm trying to think of anything that comes from all this voting shit? These people pass laws at levels of finance that you'll never fucking see. Oh, the economy is up three. What is what do they say? The GDP is up three percent. Blah blah blah. They got exponential fucking growth from where? <laughs> Where, where is this exponential growth coming from? You know, it's just another... It's a way to explain why it's so important to be a greedy freaking cunt and deprive other people of shit because you don't have enough, Mr. Millionaire. You need... Now you've hit the millionaire status. Now you need billionaire status. What? Ugh, please. Yeah. That's what the world's running on. Two cylinders and three quarts of oil short. But, hey, I didn't build this machine. This machine was like this when I found it. And it's gotten anything. It's gotten worse. Oh, I got a hump out of dirt cakes. But Moose Girl laughed because I made a comment about her joke. Hey, we're not. I'm not always funny. Sometimes, uh, hmm. Sometimes I'm funny when I don't mean to be funny. I'm just making a point and I went, wow, that was good. Because it made me laugh when I heard it back. <laughs> like my stand on boobs. I'm telling you guys, you know what? If you want to fix the whole fucking world, put your attention on boobs. Because that'll, that'll cure everything right there. You can't argue with a face full of boobs. Well, you can't eat with a face full of boobs either, but you could take a boob break for a meal. <laughs> right, honey? <laughs> anyway, I was kidding around. But, you know, if if we treated people like we treat boobs, I bet people would like each other more. I bet the boobs would go, hey, what about us? <laughs> If we were just nice to each other instead of, hey, boobs, what what's that? Hmm. Well, I was making a point about it because you know how hmm, boobs will always get your attention. Either kind, the kind that annoy you or the kind that don't annoy you. <laughs> there, there are the two different kinds, right? Annoying boobs. Anno yeah, we call them idiots. We also, as another slang for idiot or dolt is boobs singular but they tend to travel in herds sometimes only of two but often two to two hundred <laughs> and these people are they're dangerous and i'll tell you why they're dangerous because they think they know better than you and they think that their point of view not only is it sub superior to your point of view but you should see their point of view at the threat of fucking fines and imprisonment that's right if you dare to disagree with me you're gonna go to jail and we're gonna find you and that's the reality of it try running for a public office without swearing to israel that you'll support them and you'll never get a loan to go into politics they will do everything to stop you and as we've seen, independent people, they get a following and they get a, a, they get support, but it's never enough compared to the combined support of the R's and the D's. Thank you.
The R's and the D's, of course, <laughs> we know what they are. But you get your independent party. That's again, it, they're pretend. They're not. They're not real. They're like us. They're going. Oh, these people are anarchists, and they must be stopped. Now, what a real anarchist is guilty of doing is speaking. That's what anarchists do. We don't attack anyone. We don't. Well, the list of don't, whoops, the list of don't is pretty long. Let's just say that. But what we do, what would you, we talk, because that is expressing your anarchism. Don't, you don't express anarchism through violence. That's how you express state. You got the whole damn thing explained to us backwards from the way it truly is. And here we are to this day. There's even movies. You know, they call this shit The Purge. I was so insulted. But I watched it. It was a horrible fucking movie, too. But I watched it so I could hate my enemy with a clear conscience. Not just saying, oh, I don't like that. Well, I watched it and thought it sucked while I was watching it. <laughs> That's how bad it was. That I didn't have to look at the whole thing and then, well, let's see. what Was there anything there to think now from the minute it started to the minute it ended pure garbage but d does my opposition show me the same respect hmm i ponder that do they hmm. well were the adversary out there in rlm chat land huh 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 you're again my theory i'd like to hear why because the violent people are the ones that want other people to get paid to go beat the shit out of you for not listening to them. That's what politics is. Well, you won't see it my way. Well, maybe you'll see it. Sergeant Jones, come here for a minute. Bring your weapons. Yeah, go see him. <laughs> and that's it. This, this is what we've been reduced to. Under the guise of fucking help, and all the all the proof is in the medicine and the damn law, right there. You don't really need much else, but we have lots of other examples: water, food, all forms of energy. Mm. Remember, remember that greenhouse crap Obama came in on, and he was loaning fucking all these companies all this green money, and right when he got elected, they all fucking went under. Flush. You could hear the flush in Michigan. Flush. From California. You could hear it in Texas. Flush. And all that money just gone. These companies. $500 million. Boom. Overnight. Just where'd it go? Where did the fucking money go? Who knows? It never existed in the first place. But that's a whole nother dork table, I think. Rob Works knows about it. Maybe we'll do a little bit on fractional reserve banking on Tuesday. I'll get Rob on one of his rants. Because if I can catch him on something that sparks his interest bubble, the man has got a few words to say about stuff. Caught me on Tuesday. Because I'm looking at doing something in the, you know, for, for my future. Like, put it like that. Regarding energy. But I only have a limited amount of information to work with. So I got the basic concept, but I don't know how to accomplish and then apply what I want to do to whatever I, I have to improve it. So like any other improvement thing I would do, I have to find somebody that knows what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> Rob, Rob instantly understood it and he said, I'll get a converter. Wait a minute, they make those? That sounds too fucking easy. Now, here's a Jew living in Denmark, and you're showing me a shortcut. Hey, fucker, I'm interested, you know, because I already done all the long way. Now I'm settled down. I want, hey, I'm running out of time here. Let's not take, let's not take two years to do this one, <laughs> right? Right, honey? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> grow your cucumbers on your own, I say, madam. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I've got my strong side, though. I mean, just not being dependable about doing stuff because I'm late. I'm late. I'm a lazy old man. Oh, and that's sad. Ah, 
Dort Cakes knows I'm a lazy old man. He, we used to talk. Me and Dort Cakes go back to the World Truth days. Back, 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 way, way, way back, right? And to the point of they had a, a part of their site where you could do, um, they had a room you could chat in. It was like Skype, but not Skype. But you had to go through the room to get it. And I'd go in there and open a room. And it, sometimes Cakes would say something. And eventually we actually would start talking. And then uh, got off the camera shyness. And just, hey, oh, so that's what you, hey, that, wow, I didn't know you had a beard. <laughs> and we got friendly on the internet. you know. And it was, uh, not too many people are like mental. I would say mental is very unique. And he yeah the the stuff that he puts sometimes it's like he's got a story to tell and other times it's just like just random look at the wonder what this is i wonder what that is but whenever i see a giraffe i always know he's he's got uh that's a link that's designed to get my attention because he's sent me giraffes on purpose so i always look for when dork cakes is posting giraffes and think about it if you don't get it, then you don't get it. But if you do get it, then you do get it. And I don't want. I think that was enough to say about that, huh, Cakes? It's kind of like a little insider trading joke, you know. If you know, it's because if it makes sense to you, it's not about any one. It's about every one. And it's not about picking sides. It's about you're just either one or the other. And it's not a choice you can make. It is just the way it is. So it's not like an insult either. It's more like a, a, a perspective of balance. Because life can be deceiving. And as the government's proven with over and over and over with their films and their propaganda. I like the moon one. The, uh, let's go to the moon. Well, we, we can't go back to the moon. We've seem to have lost the technology to return to the moon. I don't know how that could have happened. I think somebody deleted the files to the thing that made it work. And that's the explanation we got. Hmm. But now we got a new bonehead, uh, some other... I don't know, puppet for who the fuck knows, George Soros or somebody. You know, what's his name? Elon Elon Musk, right? I mean, these people just get created out of absolute fucking nowhere with these brilliant ideas that they themselves thought of in their basement, you know, living at the mom's house. And <laughs> and now they're Bill. You look at him. He's a billionaire. Wow. <laughs> And not only that, but he's going to go to Mars. You want to go to Mars? Hey, come here, little fella, come here. Want to go to Mars? <laughs> I got a bridge on Mars. You want to see it? Uh, uh, uh. So they got this now. So they got this new Howard Hughes propped up as some fucking big player in the billionaire club game, which who the fuck knows anything about that in the first place? You just know the results they tell you. You don't know any of this shit. You read a book about somebody, and 99 times out of 100, it's a bunch of shit that somebody made up to make a book. It's so nothing to do with who you read about. But George Washington chopped down the cherry tree, and he was... Anyway, so I get a little bored of that one, but it's a good reference point. So you start with that bullshit, and then boom, here we are. Elon Musk going to go to Mars. <laughs> There's life. <laughs> These fucking assholes. They got everybody convinced they give a fuck if there's life on Mars. If there is life on Mars, all these governments are fucking doing is trying a way to dis look for a way to destroy it so it doesn't get them. <laughs> They're insane. The, and that keeps the wars here. I, how do you explain the side I see of this nightmare? Hmm. Just a bunch of little kids with guns. You know, too, too stupid to stop and think. Let's just fight about it. That works. Well, I know it works, but, you know, somebody absolutely gets fucked over when you fight. Now, when you try to think of a rational way to deal with a problem, well, 
you know, the odds of one person getting fucked over drops 50%. And all of a sudden, you know, if you try doing things in an honest way and not fuck somebody over lying to them in the first place, well, what harm could come? <laughs> I mean, crying out loud, it's really not that damn hard. But the system is designed so that if you don't, you don't. It's You're not going anywhere in the society we're in if you don't play along the way it's played. And there's a few names on this here board in front of me I can see. People that, like Woody. Woody plays the game for survival, but he's he doesn't love it. He's like us. He doesn't love these people. Hmm. Well, no, let's not say that. Let's say he doesn't like them. That's That's what I meant, Woody. He might very well love them. I mean, they are live, and it doesn't help to hate them. But to like them, ooh, that's a lot of work. I don't like the voters on either side. Don't know why. And it's not a personal thing. If you take it personal, Hans or um, Chloe, it's not like, I don't like you. It's, I don't like what you do. And that's the only way I could express that, is to say out loud, I don't like what voters do, either of you, any of you. Mind your own fucking business. And they go, well, why don't you mind your own fucking business? And I say, well, that's exactly what I do. <laughs> I do mind my own business. I don't tell anybody ever what to do. Uh, at least if I do, I, I'm not really conscious of it. I'm not a, I'm not a bark and order kind of guy. I usually just do shit for myself. But... Well, I got a giggle out of Moose because, well, I would say it was because of my stand on the voting. But it took the government a lot of work and a lot of deception to make cannabis and hemp illegal. I, and if you look at the timeline that it stretched across, it was almost 20 years. It wasn't an overnight thing. They worked on this shit. They they cut it and snagged it and they chopped it. And then they made sure that the young ones growing up would have this fear of what uh, 20 years before them everybody was using from the you know local store. But here we are today. And in a minute, we were wrong. I have not yet heard one politician or one doctor or one of these fucking assholes come out and say you know well yeah we were lying the whole time why not because what would that do if they admitted that they lied i wonder how people would take that i would just have the smuggest cheshire cat i'd probably have a grin on my face for a year <laughs> if the government had the balls to come forward and say you're using all this synthetic shit today because we lied about hemp and we lied about cannabis. Now, let's start fresh. No, you know what they're going to do? They're going to legalize shit, still make it some kind of criminal behavior, and then keep doing the same fucking rebuilding with the same crap over and over, with the same fucking stupid designs that fall down. They got the technology and the material to build a concrete that would stand a hurricane. Ask them. Look it up. It's called hemp. They call it hempcrete. There's probably different uh, levels of hempcrete you can make. I mean, it would depend on your mixture, how strong the stuff was, but shit. The crap they use now, shh, we're fucked. We're still gluing boards and nailing wood together like a bunch of fucking chimpanzees. It, then again, I saw the Fresco stuff. What was that guy's program called? Um, uh, do you remember what that was called, that Fresco guy, Cirque? No, 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 no. Uh, he had a vision for the future. Um, hmm. Jacques Fresco is his name. But anyway, he has his utopia for the future. But what people... Zeitgeist. But, okay, the, the thing that I noticed w about it was the uniformity and the force of the way his approach was. At, it seemed to be forced under the guise of kindness, but no matter what, it was still total and complete control of everything you do for your own good. 
just the fucking same story as the one we got, but the results looked a little better. But the the end result for me was still, wait a minute, no, where's where's me? You know, where's the individual? Wherever you have a society, that's what you got to give up is the individual doesn't have a fucking place in a society. You're in a group. And then after you're in a group, then you got your half of the group that thinks this way, then or however many of you there are. And then you've got the other group that thinks the opposite exact fucking way about the same pointless shit that means absolutely fucking nothing if you just let it go. But we don't do that. And then all the crap that it brings, all the violence and the stealing, is be based on the, the law about the pot. Because that's the tool they use... <laughs> to make people act out you know they sh they feed you shit they feed you shitty water they deliver it on a crappy electric system and then when people short circuit and they do stupid fucking things everybody's surprised oh what the fuck's going on oh we've got a bad person <laughs> no you don't you got somebody that's doing exactly what they're designed to do the illusion is that that's not supposed to happen but if you got the intelligence to look at the fucking design and see how a, a design of that nature functions in reality, you 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 got what you wanted. So I look at that and think, oh, but the, what would you do about with no law? Say, I walk around in the streets of Denmark every fucking day with no defined law of any kind amongst a bunch of people that I might have not ever seen as well as people that might see me two or three times a week. So, hmm. But we all share the same fucking common bond, and that's do no harm. It's so sim It's not even spoken. You don't even, you don't even need to know. Uh, I was approached by the kid. Here, here we go. I did have something happen the other day at the store. But I think I mentioned, I might not have mentioned it on the, in a perfect world. Uh, anyway. The kids are doing the cancer, um, what do you call that, uh, cancer foundation donation trip. And the kid comes to me. And all of a sudden, oh, you speak English. And then, and then all of a sudden he spoke English. I thought, oh, oh, here we go, something's cooking. And then he starts telling me about you know, cancer research foundation, blah, blah. And I said, hey, ever hear of bacon soda? <laughs> <laughs> stopped him he could read my face he knew what he was looking at anyway so because he's trained to get money from people that want to give it to him not argue with people that don't want to give it to him so whether he knew what i meant or not his training and his job was don't push anybody around leave them alone and so i asked him you know baking soda cures cancer right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have seen his face <laughs> anyway. Whether he knows whether he knows what he's doing as far as he's doing a job. The kid is just trying to make it a, a, an honest dollar without working as hard as, you know, the easiest job you can get physically, I would say. But it takes a lot of balls to do that, you know, and take people's shit like mine, you know. And I wasn't mean to the guy. I was just stern. <laughs> I, I know I had a smile on my face because the system has everybody and me at one time not convinced about the the answer was um, chemotherapy and all. I knew that was a bunch of horse shit. I didn't know what the cure was, but I knew that wasn't the cure because everybody was being led to do to do that and failing at a rate of 95%. <laughs> They, they were calling, if you live five years past your chemotherapy, you are a survivor. Yeah, they don't talk about the missing arm and, you know, the leg that fell off. The You can't hear anymore. You know, the cancer ate your nose or whatever the fuck it is. They, it's just, this is a man-made in the original form, I, I think there's a cancer that's natural. And I think that the sciences are so brilliant beyond my opinion of them the crap that they do in on the negative side is so it's exceptional i mean fuck we got frankenstein and dracula at every hospital in the in the world just go they drain your blood <laughs> they'll they'll put a pig's liver in you for ten thousand dollars by cracky 
They got no moral, no ethic. They they mix human beings with animals. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sure that an animal isn't going to survive very long if they inject it with human stuff. What do you think? Maybe I'm just crazy. I just don't have enough education, you know, to look at the entire situation and grasp it in a an intelligent fashion of an adult. No, no, no. I criticize it like a child because, uh, well, it's all crap. <laughs> that's that's why I, I've got I got verifiable links to prove it. <laughs> and the bad news is, you know, there's verifiable links to prove that everything I just said isn't true. Kill the ducks. Make friends with the ducks. We are ducks. Uh, Moose Girl says, Cirque, ever hear of duck feet boots? And I'm going to wait for I From the look on her face, it doesn't look like it's familiar. But I don't know what duck... You got a picture, I'll post it and show it to her. She's over on the couch doing her knitting through my dork table podcast because i was just going on bitching and bitching and bitching and bitching and bitching about bitching <laughs> yeah whatever mars global surveyors please vinny 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 you getting to post that na what is this nasa <laughs> what's it yeah nasa right that shit place that went to the moon in 1969 <laughs> somebody had a dream that hey, we went to the moon and well i saw this guy's video it was a disclaimer you know showing all the negative side of that and they had one one thing that really got my attention was the three astronauts had just been returned from their epic fucking moonwalk and they're sitting at this table, and they're facing cameras, and people want to interview them. And you'd think, hey, man, I just walked on the moon. Want to touch me? <laughs> and, they, they, you know, I, you'd be fucking center of the universe, people. Hey, they these three guys just went to the moon. Well, they show you this video of these three guys that just went to the moon, and it looks like they just went to go see their bank account, and it had no zeros in it, you know, like, two digits well where where's the money well it's coming what we didn't get paid oh man and that's the the kind of face that these three guys that just went to the moon had when they were being interviewed after going to the moon and they said the wackiest shit too like no i i didn't see any stars out there anywhere okay i can go outside after the show and i'll bet if i look in the sky you know what i'll see stars okay now if they went to the moon and they're standing on the part of the moon i can look at and see well hmm i mean there's no stars behind us <laughs> they're only that way <laughs> oh i get it now all the stars are way over that way but not behind me Funny, when I turn around, they seem to be there again. <laughs> I I can't make sense. I don't know. They taught me a lot of weird shit when I was in school. So I, I don't know. I'm just glad I don't drive anymore. Good God. If I was driving, I don't know if I'd be a danger to the people around me or not. Because I grew up driving in a place where you either got in traffic or you went, stay home. Don't play, you know, freeway on ramps and shit, you know, 60, 70, 80, 90 miles an hour sometimes. <clears throat> anyway, but uh, but to slow down to this five cars is a traffic jam because we have these dividers. I'll post a picture on RLO of, of one of the, the street dividers that's designed here instead of stop signs. They, they have these dividers, and what it tends to do is the less aggressive driver will pull over and let the more aggressive driver go on. And then sometimes you got two people that are decent to each other, and they both stop at the same time. So then they got to flash the lights, then the, the flash the light to let the other guy go ahead of you. And some people are still like that, and other people, 
Wow. <laughs> oh, man. You, they, it's like they see a parking space at Walmart, and they're going to get it. <laughs> and I've heard them fly down this street. I don't know. Flying down this road would be doing 50. That would be fast because these damn little turnouts. It's just enough. If you hit them, if you go through that too quick, you might roll yourself. You know, but depending on the driver. I, I've seen some pretty lame shit in my life. But uh, out here, they <laughs> one guy, he hit the thing with his, wind, with his uh, mirror right in front of the house. We had cops and, it, you know, tow truck to come help him and all that shit. But, you know, no intrusion. Hey, knocking on the door. Wait, did you see this accident? I'm going to take a report whether you want to give it or not. No, the people that were involved in it were involved in it. The rest of us weren't. Now, uh, that's one of my fond memories of living here with Cirque is, is when shit does go wrong, it's still minuscule. You know, it's very uh, fortunate. I don't know what the right word is, but the, there's a longevity to this place. Lots of old folkers. Old folkers older than me folkers doing more physical shit than I do. You know, and then there's a few of them that are, that are in the scooters, motorized scooters, but for the most part, you know, the, it's like the older you get, the younger, because the younger people, they don't get out as much as the older people do. I think the electronic world has definitely numbed that until you're about 13 or 14. I ain't going out in that. Now it's, you know, to that here where I, I don't see a lot of kids out. And, but I don't know. Maybe I'm old and I just don't, I'm not hitting the right time of day. But when I go into town on the weekends, that's when the kids come out with their parents. It's like, a, wow, I don't know. I don't know what to compare it to. Even when I was a, when, yeah, when I was a kid, my, my parents would take me and my brother because we weren't old enough to be left unattended until I think I was about eight when they first give it a shot, see if they could take off for an hour or two without me burning the house down. And I took off real good on that. So because uh, I could do it, my brother got to do it. So he started everything a year a year ahead of me because he was always younger. You know how that goes. And just reminded me something just caught my attention about that. So these uh, these history things. You're know, like, oh, crying out loud! I was eight years old. When I was eight years old, I was interested in school. And when I was nine years old, I, I just stopped. Didn't something I, I have no idea what shifted or what changed or what happened. But I went from uh, being a above average student to being a below average student from one semester to the next with uh, no provocation from anybody. Just me. Me being me. My mom and dad were just a little uh, pissed, I think was probably the right word for it you know my performance wasn't what uh, wasn't at exceptional levels in school so all the adults were all in a big hoopla about it and I think because they gave that so much attention I think I like that better than being a uh, the smart kid thing that one I went oh hey man I get I get all this other shit if I'm a bad guy <laughs> I have no clue. I'm just guessing at what could have changed in an eight-year-old's mind from being eight to being nine over a period of three months, from the summer to the fall, and I was a different person. And no identifying marks to it. It's just boom. So, hmm. And I can't say that for too many other people. I noticed most other folks were... Um, stable you know if they were they did this in this school year they did the same thing every year year in and year out they didn't drop they didn't get better they were just like flat and me i went from above flat to below flat <laughs> but i remember they would have these uh this teacher this math teacher would have these uh races and they'd split the room in half and me and this other guy were the best in in running up to the board, writing the thing down, and coming up with an answer. So we were always the captain of the opposing teams. 
And so we made buddies. We became good friends. And sometimes he beat me and sometimes he didn't. And it was like big deal. But if I lost at anything else against anybody else, it was more personal. I don't know. I've always taken, um, taken competition like that. But I remember Mario and me with the math questions on the crease board, on the chalkboard. And that was, and I was still doing shitty in school, my math classes, all that. So I, but I could do the, <laughs> so it caused a lot of, uh, adults to be angry with me is I guess the right word. They'd give me a lot of lectures about not meeting my potential. And, you know, I wasn't performing the way they wanted me to. And looking back on it now, that might've been the excuse that I needed to do what I do. Yeah. Very well could have been. I don't, I don't know. I'd like to know, but eh. Hey, we lost Mr. Dork cakes, but he stuck around for the whole show. We're about, 10 minutes away from a full dork table and eh, this one wasn't so hot i didn't have a didn't have a connecting thought i have been thinking about circ a lot this week because she's not been good so she's been on my mind all through the show blah 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 hmm. and usually you know out of sight out of mind so when when i'm doing the radio she usually takes the dog for a walk or does something but today she didn't feel so hot so she's just over there knitting and you know i could un- i I know that uh, if something's got my attention like that, it's, I guess it deserves it. And, and there's just not a lot in life that does that to me. Most most people, well, there's a few people on the RLM I've grown rather fond of. Uh, but not like Sir. Sorry, guys. Didn't want to get you all hard and dripping and reject you, but... <laughs> I thought I thought the dork table needed a good joke for an ending today, and uh, I, uh they're debating the I don't know Fox something smoke hot spots visible from space. Oh yeah 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 the fires out in California. Good lord, hey dorky cakes is back. Cool. Well I'm almost done anyway, but yeah well. Next, maybe I'll uh, I'll pr- predict what I'm gonna. I might do that for a n- next show because now I'm gonna do um, the other program that I started with Vinny. I'm gonna do it with with Rob. If Rob's hanging around, then he's good to do the show with. I think maybe this week me and him should do a show about commerce. Get them all excited about money and. He can drop some names about who to see about what kind of problem. It could be an interesting show. So, that ends the Dork Table podcast for this wonderful Saturday, the 10th of November, 2018. And then tomorrow, uh, what do we got coming on in the morning? Mr. Grimner and his blues. Blues! But, you know, Grim, don't take it bad. Sometimes me and Cirque are watching movies or doing other things and here's the piss part about it though once in a while i'll be playing you blues on my computer and then the damn thing my speakers die (laughs) and if i put my headphones on then cirque doesn't know what i'm hearing and she wants to hear what i'm hearing so uh in what do you call that i'm having a vinny moment with my speaker setup i i need to improve it and i've yet not found a reason to be you know, I'm still finding Jew reasons to not upgrade. <laughs> that way I could hear the blues while I'm playing trivia with you tomorrow. Anyway, trivia until Hal Anthony comes in uh, behind from behind the woodshed and does a little bit of stuff with, I don't know, administration, law, the way he sees shit, mining. You know, Hal thinks a lot of other people's rights. And he knows the legal thing. You know, the thing that I don't support, Hal supports. That's the way he sees things. And I'm not arguing whether whether it's real or not. I'm saying that if that's the way that you're going to go, then Hal knows what he's doing. I, I would... I would definitely use his advice if I, if I ever got into a situation where I wanted to play the legal game. I would do that. So, we've said that one. But I like Hal Anthony. And I thought he needed a little cheering up. 
because I'm a cricket and I can't do nothing with it. Oh, hey, Moose and Kate, thanks back. And uh, what do we got? We got me again coming up on uh, Tuesday night with Rob Works in a perfect world. And then on Wednesday, you got Graham Z with a rocket chair flying around, getting all ertsy and snertsy, reading uh, links and telling us all what we need to know about everything. And she's right, too. But, you know what? She'll be back. Because she comes back on Friday night and does it all over again before Moose and Grimner do the Freaker's Ball. Unless Moose goes out to a festival. Because she, she's been known to fly off and go do shit on the weekend. And uh, then Grim gets to do balls to the wall. <laughs> See, I said it right that time. Well, folks... I'm going to cut out of here a few minutes early and call it a night in Dorkville. But thanks a lot for playing along, and uh, see you next Saturday if you show up. Oh, bit shoot and uh, Spreaker, and go to the RLM chat. Some people, it might be a little bit tough to do that. You know, it might be a little like a shyness thing going on. I just got booted from the free node. Okay, bye. I'm closing.